Good evening. Welcome. I'm Jeremy Strick, director of the National Sculpture Center, and we believe tonight marks an historic occasion. The National Sculpture Center is, at its core, a museum of modern and contemporary sculpture based upon a private collection by a Dallas couple, Patsy and Raymond Nasher. One of the great private collections in the world of sculpture that dates from the late 19th century to the present day. The Harry Bertoy exhibition was really the first major museum retrospective that tried to wrap its arms around the full array of his practice. He's best known for designing an iconic mid-century chair. He spent the last probably 12 years of his life investigating the nature of sound. Sound as a sculptural material, the way that it affects our experience of space. I grew up in Chicago, and I would walk out to the Standard Oil Building Plaza where this magnificent array of Bertoia sounding sculptures lived, and they, the wind would activate these things. I, I got imprinted with the Bertoia sound sculptures and I pitched this idea. David had the idea of a series of performances, six performances, each featuring a different kind of instrument. <laughs> Harry Bertoia Foundation lent us 21 sounding sculptures for our exhibition, and then added another 20 just for the concerts. It's a risk, uh, and one has to embrace risk. You can't make art if there's no risk. Art entails doing something that you haven't done before. It's amazing. It's like, these are the sounds that I kind of want my guitar to sound like anyway. It's hard to tell where the sculptures end and the guitar begins and vice versa. It's absolutely dreamy. I've been aware of the Bertoia sound sculptures since the 70s actually, when my twin brother Alex and I investigated them uh, on a sound level, uh, it fit right into our musical universe at the time, and then I kind of forgot about them until I met David. So the opportunity to try to interact with such sublime and fascinating sound is an incredible opportunity. I feel cleansed. <laughs>
I actually grew up with with the Bertoia sculptures in my house. My, I mean, no, not the actual sculptures, but my dad had the records. To me, it's they're really special things. That sound has been in my ear for a lot of years. Yeah, it's all sound. Yeah, it's 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 different than a trumpet, but in a lot of ways, it's you know, it's just different ways of making sound. You know, it's timely for me. I've been doing a lot of investigation into sustain and what happens to sound after the initial attack of things. So this has been great to explore. To really spend time with each one and see how much sound you can get out of it has been um, a really kind of eye-opening experience as well as just feeling kind of like I'm back in my childhood as well. The whole room vibrates because of the instruments in it and even the sympathetic vibrations between the pieces you know one piece sets off another piece and there's a sort, certain sort of unpredictability to it that is just beautiful it's like they, they take on a, a life of themselves really the decaying of the uh, overtones all has a sound and, and, and a song in itself and we're not actually playing notes as if it was a piano we're playing the overtones and overtones have no agenda their agenda is to go through you go inside you go through things and we experience these things together uh, in in real time and out of out of real time if, if that makes sense
They're really tactile and they feel really beautiful under your fingers so I like to feel them out. What happens if I move it a little bit? What happens if I stop one of the staves? What happens? Um, like it's very nuanced and they're really, really sensitive. You know, I've been immersed for the last week or so in the recordings, and it was it was incredible to to, to hear everything at once. But definitely intimidated, I'd have to say. But uh, exciting! This is so exciting. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. When you pluck, you really have to wait for the, the sound to finish and, and really listen, and it's not really predictable. Thank you. 
We have an advantage in that, you know, we're percussionists, so we, we can approach them in a, it, I don't want to say a more rhythmic way, because everyone approaches them in a rhythmic way, but maybe in a more percussive way. It's pretty exciting to finally get the chance to engage in all these beautiful pieces um, and have the dialogue with Dan, of course. But I, yeah, I've never really been in a situation where I had access to anything remotely close to this. <laughs> so this is pretty new for me. When I heard that, me and Marcus looked at each other and we're like, that's, that's the one. So when I heard the gongs, I was, I was pretty blown away.
Some of these are so sensitive to disturbances in the air that if you play something on this instrument, it'll, it'll activate some of these. And the whole space is always energized. There's already a connection between the piano and these sculptures. Let's go. Let's go to the sandbox and play with these and see what's possible.
Whitney Balliot said, I think he wrote famously, that jazz was the sound of surprise. You know, hurting jazz musicians is a lot like hurting cats. You know, it happens that the cats are some of the, some of the hardest to corral, but best cats in the world. <laughs> <laughs> 